The following sermon was recorded at Tri-State Worship Center at The Point. Tri-State Worship Center is a church of God founded in Southern Ohio, where we encourage the saints, help the hurting, and embrace all people. Watch, listen, and allow Pastor Terry Wagner to help you find your path to enlightenment. Um, have you come to worship the Lord this morning? I hope so. That's what we've come to do. I mean, Christmas is nice and we can do all that, but it's about worshiping the Lord. Amen? Let me, let me remind you of two things real quick. Number one, if you want to go on the missions trip to Nicaragua, your application is due today. We extended the deadline by a week to give some of you a chance to... Uh, Pray about it. Think about that. We need that application today. Is Carolyn in here? I saw her earlier. She might be out there somewhere flapping her jaws in the hallway. Uh, I mean, I mean, fellowshipping and loving people, encouraging people in the hallway. That's what I, yeah, encouraging. Yes, that was it. So if you need to turn in that application, please do that today. Secondly, we don't take up an offering in a traditional way. I ask you to drop your offering, your tithe, your building fund commitments into the boxes on the wall. Or you can go online and give at TSWC.org, or you can text to give at 740-370-4342, which believe it or not, uh, that text to give thing has really taken off for us. So feel free during the sermon this morning while you're texting your friends, just drop a thousand dollars on us while you're texting. I got at least one amen in the first service. Amen. Heaven but laughs in this service. Uh, we do We do need you to be faithful in your giving. It's good to see you. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to be with us. After that, we're going to encourage you and invite you to go greet someone in the name of the Lord and tell them about to see him in church. Dear Heavenly Father, we bow before you this morning thanking you for an awesome day. This is the day that you've made for us. We're going to make the choice to rejoice and be glad in it because you're such a great God and you're greatly to be praised. I pray this morning that as we do that, as we lift you up, you'll come and inhabit this place. For we know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, all things are possible. So, God, you just touch every need, physical, spiritual, financial, emotional. We know that you're able to do that. This morning, we pray for our offering. You would multiply it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless those who give, press down, shake it together, and running over into life. God, I pray this morning that everything that we do will point people to Jesus Christ, Him crucified, buried, resurrected, ascended to the Father, soon to return. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. Because it is in His name, in Jesus' name that we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Go greet someone. Amen. amen. Do, you, do you appreciate our praise team and, and, the, and the band? I mean, I think they just do an awesome job. As most of you have probably noticed by now, at least I hope you've noticed by now, I've got some extra family with me this morning. Uh, normally, me and Jerry... Uh, pack up our families and go to Indianapolis and then Larry and Teresa and Aaron from Atlanta drive to Indianapolis and we have Christmas up there but uh, somehow it worked out to where they all came down here and uh, so we had Christmas here yesterday and most everybody hung around I think I have a picture I stole off of Facebook in case you didn't get to see it see if Tyler can pull that up here for me uh, you see anything weird about this picture I'm telling you I'm adopted I know I'm adopted <laughs> There's no way, right? Uh, that's me, and then Larry and Jerry. Most of you, you know Jerry, but Larry's Jerry's twin brother, and then Ronnie, and then our little brother Eddie. He had to leave this morning, uh, go to Cincinnati, and then back to Indianapolis uh, after that. But they were all here yesterday, and uh, we just hung out and ate. And of course, mom's here. Mom, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Just do it one time. <laughs> Who said that? Larry. Mom. So always wanted to do that, you know. She was always telling me what to do. I'm telling you what to do. I saw Dave Roach say something to Larry this morning during fellowship, and I thought, I hope he remembers that he's Larry, not Jerry. He did. Yeah, okay, good. good. And uh, so I, I just, I, I, I think we are all somehow formed and fashioned uh, in a large part because of our family. I, I think I could safely say, and do safely say, that you know my dad was probably the biggest influence on my life because of his perseverance, his creativity. Most of you know he's paralyzed on the left side of his body. 
and uh, but yet he never let anything stop him from doing what he wanted to do. Uh, he still drove. He still uh, he had a uh, he had a boat that he took the handle and the wheels off of a wagon and attached the wheels to the top of the back of the boat handle and he would take that boat in his truck down to a lake and then pull it like a wagon behind him and get it in the water and had a little trolling motor and he'd just go fishing. And he that, that was my dad. My dad was paralyzed, only had one hand, but he never wore, he didn't wear slip-on shoes until later in life. He always wore tie-up shoes. Now, I don't know if you ever tried to tie your shoes with one hand. Try it sometime. I can't do it. And, and that's, that's the kind of guy my dad was. He just would never let anything get in his way. He would actually uh, tie the fishing hook on the fishing line himself. And he would bait the hook with one hand and his mouth with a live worm. And he liked them big and fat and juicy. <laughs> So uh, I love my family, I love my brothers. I mean, I think, you know, growing up uh, with the brothers that I grew up with left me scarred for life. <laughs> Oprah's helping me, though. I see Dr. Phil next, and then I go to Dr. Drew for rehab. And after that, I think I'll be all right. But, you know, we grow up, and that's who makes us. And so uh, knowing that they were all going to be here today, I I've asked my older brother, Ronnie, who pastors in... Uh, Mooresville, Indiana has a church there that he's been at now for, I don't know, four or five years, six years. Six years? They put up with you that long? Well, I bet, I'm sure they won't be there when you get back. Uh, that's the kind of scarring that's gone on in our family ever since. So I want Ronnie to come and, and uh, just share with us the word of the Lord that uh, God's laid on his heart. Do you love my brother? Would you just love on him a little bit? That's why I feel I mentioned older. He's older, bro. <laughs> Better looking. <laughs> they tell me I look like mom, so whatever you want to say. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I hope I got these right, because I don't know if I put them back in the right order. I may preach the end of this first. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. <clears throat> it is an honor to be here. I, uh, I've been in ministry 23 years and still I'm very nervous anytime I get behind a pulpit because I take that I have life and death in my hands, that I'm here to speak a word to your life that is either going to be life or death for you. So uh, I count it an honor to be standing here. I appreciate uh, your pastor. Uh, somebody asked if I was preaching today, I said, yeah, and they said, do you know why? I said, well, either he thinks I can or he just feels he has to uh, let me preach. But I hope I've come with the word that will encourage you, uplift you, and uh, make us more aware of what's going on in this world. If you don't know, the end is coming. Uh, I hope you know that. And I hope you know that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And uh, for the past few months, uh, at our church anyway, the Lord has just impressed on my heart, and I can't get away from it, to preach the cross. There's a lot of things we can preach. But there's only one thing going to get us to heaven, and that's the blood of Jesus. <coughs> nothing else will get you there. Nothing else will save you. Nothing else will give you the power but the blood of Jesus. And a few months ago, I went to the doctor's office, and uh, they gave me a blood test. How many here have ever had a blood test? You know, they, they do that, I guess, to uh, check your cholesterol and your sugar levels and everything, I guess, uh, to make sure that you're healthy or everything is working right in you. It's, a, it's amazing. Listen, when, when, when I start thinking about the human body, and I've got a, quite a bit to think about. <laughs> you don't have to laugh. Uh, how anybody can say there is not a God. The way this thing is put together and one little thing affects we just didn't happen. Uh, but, but I went and had this, this blood test and they said, you're doing pretty good. In fact, one doctor told me this. I, I kind of thought he was, well, I don't want to tell you what I thought he was. But he came back after checking everything and he said, he said, uh, Ron, he said, uh, cholesterols are good. 
your all that other restaurant oils are, are good. You've got your, your sugar's fine. I, I, I'm, I'm not a diabetic, which that's an amazing thing right there. He said, man, you as healthy as a cow. You're just big as one. <laughs> See, when, 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 when you go to the doctor, he's already got your money, so he can tell you whatever he wants to tell you. You can't do anything about it. But listen, the Lord laid this on my heart. There's a far more important blood test that we need to take today. And every time we come to church, we should be taking a blood test. And I want to share that with you this morning. Just, you have a blood test. Now, I'm going to try this again. Is that red? Okay. The word blood. Let me stop a minute. Will you pray with me? Father, I just come to you and I thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to spread your word. Lord, I ask that you would just anoint it and you would anoint me, that, Lord, I would speak the very words you would have me to speak, that, Lord, it would touch and affect our lives. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The word blood is mentioned over 300 times in the Bible. And it's essential to the doctrine of Jesus' blood as an atonement for our sin. Do you understand the only thing that forgives you of your sin is the blood of Jesus? Do you understand that? I've, I've said it. I've heard it said until it was brought to my attention not too long ago. You know, because God loves you, He forgives you. And that's, that sounds good and everything. And I went along with that for, for a long time until somebody explained to me it wasn't because God loved us that we're forgiven. It's because Jesus died that we're forgiven. If Jesus, if, if God could just forgive you because He loves you, Jesus wouldn't have to die. He'd just love us. But any time that we ask forgiveness, any time after we've asked God to forgive us, and we do something we shouldn't do, God doesn't forgive us because He loves us. He has to remember Jesus on that cross again and the blood that He shed. So we, I want us to remember that the next time something comes up. Because listen, we can get so complacent. Like, well, I'm saved. I, forgive me. And we go on our way, but we don't think about what God has to go through when He forgives us again. He has to put His Son back on that cross. He has to remember what Jesus did because that's the only way that we can be saved today. Amen? And if we as pastors and men of God quit preaching the blood, I don't know about you, but well, we can get sermons on everything under the, under the sun today, can't we? And sermons that we want to hear. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Amen. We like them good sermons. How good we are. How blessed we can be. How much we can get. Don't preach that sermon about my habits. Don't preach that I can't keep one and give it. I told somebody this the other day. I said, listen. If the Bible said, Thou shalt not eat spinach, I'm going to heaven. I am on my way. I will be a perfect. Thou shalt not eat sauerkraut. Jesus and me are sitting together beside God. Thou shalt not eat pizza. We got a problem. We got a problem. And see, that's the way we are with Jesus with our lives. See, we'll give up those things that we really don't like, but if He starts getting on something that, that then we gotta, we got to think. And here's what God said. No sin will enter to heaven. No sin. And the only way you can be rid of sin is through the blood of Jesus. And if us pastors stop preaching about the blood, if we fail to talk about the blood, or if we take the blood of Jesus for granted, then we have lost the true purpose of the church and we have become nothing more than sounding brass and tingling cymbals. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some years ago, a terrible railroad accident occurred, killing a lot of people. <coughs> a, con a commuter train had stalled on the tracks just a few minutes before a fast freight train was due to arrive. The conductor quickly sent someone to flag down the approaching train. Those on board the commuter train weren't concerned at all. After all, the railroad workers had everything under control. They just sat quietly. Some even took a nap, while others sipped coffee and read the newspaper. Then the unthinkable happened. The fast freight train was seen just yards away and still traveling at a very fast rate of speed. 
It smashed into the rear of the commuter train, sending wreckage in every direction and screams from dying passengers. Train cars were stacked and thrown around like toys, and under them and around them were dismembered bodies and corpses everywhere. The engineer of the freight train had survived by jumping out of the cab of the locomotive just moments before the impact. He was brought into court in the investigation of the accident to explain why he had not stopped when he saw the conductor flagging him down. I want you to listen to his answer. I saw the man waving a flag, but it wasn't red. It was yellow. And yellow flags just mean slow down, not stop. I slowed down, but continued forward until I saw the back of the commuter train. But it was too late to stop before we could reach the train in front of us. All I could do was jump. So I did. The warning flag was then introduced as evidence, and it truly was no longer bright red. It had been red at one time, but because of long exposure to the sun and weather, it had become dirty yellow. Neglect and abuse had turned a powerful warning into a deadly mistake. Think about that. Church, we need to have a blood test every time we come into the church to make sure that we're in preaching a false gospel, a yellow gospel, where the power of the blood of Jesus has faded away. Amen. A yellow, weak, faded gospel, empty of the red blood of Jesus Christ, will not save a single soul. Are you with me? This phrase came out a few years ago, and at first I've, I've jumped on the bandwagon. But since then I've had my... Where we as the church need to be seeker-friendly. As soon as that came out, you noticed a lot of churches, and, and I know you're getting ready to build one, but just hang with me. A lot of churches started focusing more on things that would draw people in than the blood that would keep people safe. Amen. We look for the thing, and if, if I read my Bible right, the Lord said, if you accept me in my blood, you'll be a peculiar person. You'll be in the world, but not of the world. I remember my brother telling me this years ago, and I've shared it with everybody. He said he's read a survey once where 87% of all Americans believe in God. Isn't that great? 87% of America believes in God. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that 87% of America is in church this morning? No. Well, it's not because they don't believe in God. Listen, I know we don't like to hear that. I know we don't like to think that we're the problem. But let me share something with you this morning. If we get to the place where we're ashamed to tell people about the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and what He's done for us, then we have got a yellow flag gospel. Amen. We are waving a flag, but we're not stopping anybody. We're just slowing them down. And if we don't preach the blood of Jesus, Him crucified and risen again, there's going to be a lot of souls not making. And I know we're all going to stand before Him and give an account of our own, but you want to know something? The church needs to preach the blood of Jesus. That's what we need today. Amen? Amen? Only Jesus and His blood sacrificed on the cross can redeem a soul from hell. Amen? Amen. Guess what? Grandma praying for you ain't going to keep you out of hell. Amen? Mama's prayers at night may help you that night, but it doesn't save your soul from hell. Only what can wash away my sin? There you go. I like it. Who was singing that? Nice. <laughs> Nothing but the blood. Listen, there is a well-known pastor years ago, got on national television, and he was asked, why do you credit the growth of your church, one of the biggest churches in the United States? And you want to know what he said? He said, well, I don't preach against sin. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear how bad they are. I can't tell them about Jesus if I tell them how bad they are. Can I tell you something? 
If I don't tell you how bad you are, you don't know you need Jesus. You need the blood that was shed on Calvary. And once that blood saves you, it should be powerful enough that you would tell others. We don't listen, listen, we don't need to be quiet anymore. What we need to become is Pentecostals again. You won't bring your chair right up here. I kind of like the way you're. <laughs> Only Jesus. It's like the old song says there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins as sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilty shame stains. That's where I want to be today, folks. You know what? It really doesn't matter to me what people think anymore. I've got a Savior that died for me on the cross. And it's His blood that I'm washing in that will allow me to stand before Him one day in heaven and hear this. Well done. Man! Listen, I don't know what you're waiting to do when you get to heaven. I'm waiting to hear, well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. When we come to church or we get along with God, we need to do a checkup from the neck up and we need to make sure that the arteries of, of blessings that come only through the blood of Jesus are open wide and not blocking the flow of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. The precious blood of Jesus is an awesome and powerful thing. When Mo, I call her Mo Holly, came up for prayer just now, first thing I could think of is, God, just send the blood. Your stripes are, we're already healed. We don't have to ask for it. We don't have to beg for it. He said, by my stripes, you are healed. It's not like these credit card advertisements you get in the, in the, in the mail, pre-approved. Oh man, I got me $5,000 and you call up and they say, eh. <laughs> Jesus, let me tell you something this morning. When Jesus said it, you can take it to the bank. And he said, by my stripes, you're here. So I'm sitting over, I'm just praying in. God, give her what she's already got. Let her feel that in her body. Take away the pain, your blood. Amen. How many here's ever had surgery? How many, how many paid big bill after that surgery? How many still hurt from that surgery? Guess what? That's because surgery won't take it away. Surgery is only a band-aid. Get underneath the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because he said, I, I healed you. I, you're done. You're healed. Here's where our problem is. We don't accept it. And, and... If it's not done the way we think it ought to be done, then it's not done at all. God just didn't hear me. I'm just going to let that go because I felt the Spirit say, just let that soak in. Listen, when you ask God for something, you don't get to answer it. You just have to trust that He's giving you exactly what He wants you to have. Mm. Where am I at? Okay, I'm over here. The blood allows us to enter into the very presence of God. Just as the high priest was able to enter into the Holy of Holies only by the blood of the sacrificial lamb. Listen, it consecrates us. Hallelujah. It cleanses us and makes us worthy. Worthy. I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. We just... Thank Jesus that our sins are forgiven and go on. But he says, listen, you can come into my very presence. How many here likes to get into the presence of God? Anybody? Anybody ever been in the presence of God? Man, that's a great place to be. Something inside of me just kind of... <clears throat> I shared with... Excuse me, in the first service... <clears throat> excuse me, I was told to do this. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you why you want to know why that goes in the first service anyway here 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 in a, next week next saturday i've got a friend of mine that a, is a big butler bulldog fan butler's doing good and he's a big contributor he graduated from here and he's a big contributor so for the last four or five years now uh butler iu purdue and notre dame gets together and they play two games down <laughs> in the field line. 
and, and he gets premium seats. We this will be our fourth year going with him, and he sent me a picture of, of the ticket stuff. We're three rows up from the floor. I'm from here to you from all the action. Now I've been close before, and I'm an IU fan, and 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 and, and when they come out of that tunnel with the big IU flags and the cheerleaders and they come right in front of us. You know what I'm saying? And I anticipate that and I'm sitting there like, in fact, I even got my camera waiting to get my favorite picture, not of Tom Cream. Now, a lot of you probably don't know who he is and a lot of IU fans wish they didn't know it, but we'll go on and pray for him. Uh, I'm ready and, I, and my heart's beating because I'm getting ready to be in the presence of an IU basketball team that I only get to see on television most of the time. And I was sitting there thinking, you know what, that's the way we ought to feel when we get ready to come in church. Amen. When you all were standing in that hallway, you ought to thought, man, you know what, I'm getting ready to get into the presence of God Almighty. Instead of, now, now I'm just, I tell this to my church. Instead of sitting around drinking coffee before church and talking to, man, I would be sitting out there like, man, there's something starting to pound inside of me. I'm about ready to go inside the Holy of Holies. I'm about ready to get into the presence of God. And you know what? Something ought to be pounding in us. And if it's not pounding, we need to take blood test. We need to know exactly whose blood is flowing through our veins. Hebrews. It's going to come up. Hebrews chapter 10, 19 through 22 says this. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He consecrated for us, through the veil, that is His flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The power of the cleansing power of Jesus has no limits. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. It never runs out. There is no sin too great, no life too evil, and no cry of mercy that God does not hear. And the blood of Jesus cannot meet. I was a youth pastor for several years. And man, them teenagers come in and tell you they've done some mighty, mighty bad things. Had one young lady tell me, I've, I've done something, pastor. She was... Eight, 17, 18 years old. I've done something, Pastor, I know God can never forgive me of. Never. And I said, well, what was that? She said, I'm 17 years old, and I've had three abortions. And I'm going tomorrow for my fourth. You tell me how a God can love me. You know what? I can't. But I can tell you this, through the blood of Jesus, Amen. He'll forgive you. Amen. Through the blood of Jesus, because see, through the blood of Jesus answers questions we can't answer. It will love, it'll love people we can't love. But it's only through the blood of Jesus. God says that whosoever will. I said it's the first service, I'm going to say it to you. I know every one of your names. Your name translated in heaven is whosoever. Every one of you. There ain't none of you sitting here from the youngest to the oldest. No matter what you've done in your life, that the blood of Jesus cannot cleanse. And let God tell you this, it's better than Ajax. <laughs> Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Whosoever will may come and drink at this living water, and that means allowing the blood of Jesus to wash over them. Whether it's a murderer on death row or a traffic violator. Come on. Whether it's an alcoholic in the gutter or a wealthy merchant on Wall Street. Jesus' blood is sufficient for all sin. All sin. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Can I tell you this this morning? The blood of Jesus is our bridge to heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm glad it's a bridge because I don't fly. <laughs> when I, I was up at a, uh, at a church, we had a new pastor come in and he, he loved mission trips. And, and he loved going to Africa. 
And he says, every, and we're sitting there the first time we met him, and we're sitting there with, with the board, and he, he was excited. He said, listen, next year, Pastor Ron, me and you are going to Africa. And one of the board members said, Pastor Ron, don't fly. No, what they said was, when, was, when did they build a bridge to Africa? <laughs> but let me tell you something. The blood of Jesus is the only way you're going to get to heaven. I don't know what you've been told. I don't know what you heard. I don't know what you believe. But you can believe this. If you don't have the blood of Jesus in your life, you're not going to go to heaven. Because see, the only thing that's going to go to heaven, he said, is something with out spot or blemish. And the only way we can do that is he has to see us through the blood. Through the blood. When we, make, when, when we are made close to God, we're made close to God by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. His blood bridged the gap. And now we can commune with God just like Adam did in the beginning. Isn't that cool? I don't have to go tell somebody what I did. I just got to say, Jesus, you know. Wash me again. How many here has been washed in the blood? We'll see. Boy, you didn't like that one, did you? I could have spent all day and not said that. The wall of sin that separates us from God is broken down by the blood of Jesus. Flattened by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2. 13 and 14 says, But now in, Je in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near. How? By the blood of Jesus. For He Himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. Listen, I've come all the way from Mooresville, Indiana to tell somebody today, stop looking for peace in the wrong, in the wrong places. Amen. Stop looking for joy in the wrong places. There's only one place to find peace and there's only one place to find joy in the blood of Jesus Christ. <coughs> oh, that'll last for a long time, won't it? Amen. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament economy, there were daily sacrifices. Man, I'm liking it. In the temple as well as special sacrifices at times of the great feast. Let me tell you something. Animals were slaughtered by the hundreds of thousands to get that that blood. Yet the scripture tells us that all that blood shed by those sacrificial animals could only serve to purify the flesh. Did you hear me? It didn't touch the soul. It only purified the flesh so that the priest could go in and hopefully not die himself. That's the only reason. Listen, it is by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus the main sacrifice that we're there. God's holiness and glory requires perfection. And nothing less than perfection can stand before Him. That perfect sacrifice can only be found in the shed blood of the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It is the blood of Jesus that we are made perfect in the sight of God. Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad that we have the blood of Jesus that kind of comes between us and God and God don't see how you really are even though He sees how you really are? Amen. We don't hide nothing from Him. We have to be washed in the blood. I asked this in the first service. Got some looks and not just looks at me, looks at each other. But how many of you took a shower today? I want you to look around and see how many people did not take a shower today. <laughs> I said day, not week, Larry. <laughs> Raise your hand again. How many took a shower today? Now leave it up if you took a shower yesterday also. Okay? Leave it up if you took a shower the day before that. Alright. Now let me ask you a question. Why did you do that? Why did you take a shower every day? Because you're dirty. <laughs> Every day, right? Even though, now listen, this is going somewhere. Some of you may already. Even though you were clean, from one night to the next, in between there, you got dirty. And you didn't want that dirt to be noticed by other people or that smell to be noticed by other people. Listen, somebody's going to get happy right here in a second. So you washed all that off every day. Then how come you're only washing the blood on Sunday? How come you're only washing the blood when you hear somebody talk or there's a song on the radio? Don't you know from last Sunday, when you leave here today, you're going to get dirty tomorrow. And you need
need to be washed in the blood again. It's nothing wrong. Listen, let me tell you something. Terry, Terry shared something with me between services that I've, I've been sharing with for him. I'm going to tell you what it is because God's working on me. But let me tell you something. I don't care if you think you're God's saint. You need to come to the altar every Sunday and say, wash me again. Man, I need another washing because yesterday's gone. Today I'm in need. And listen, if we're sitting here agreeing that the only thing that takes away our sin is the Lamb of God, you telling me you don't sin but once a week? Brother, Pastor Terry, what a wonderful church you have. Please come and preach at my church because I'm going to tell you, even the pastor at my church, which is me, I'm not trying to throw a trick on you, I have to wash in the blood every day. I need to make sure I'm cleansed every day. I'm not, I'm not just happy because Jesus blesses me. Let me tell you something. There's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. There's a difference between being blessed and being washed. I'll take a washing. I want to make sure I'm going to make it. Now I'm going to make sure I don't know where I'm at. Well, this, is the second, this is the second service, so I'm really not on too much of it. I hope that's Hebrews 9, 13, 14. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh nothing about the sins here how much more mm, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God the Bible says this you fathers on earth wanting to give good gifts to your children. Amen? If you believe that says that, right? He said, how much more do I... I want to live in the how much more, folks. I don't want to live... I want to live in the how much more. How can I get there? i got to be washed in the blood every day. I need to get up in the morning and say, Jesus, the wash that I had yesterday was good for yesterday. But Lord, I need a fresh washing today. I need you to wash me in the blood right now. Amen? 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers. That means trying to live a second-hand religion. <clears throat> well, that's what Grandma said. And that's how Grandma did it. That's how Daddy did it. That's how Mommy did it. No, Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Okay, he wants to have a personal relationship with you. He says, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without spot and without blemish, only by the blood will you stand in heaven one day. Amen. No good works. Don't we do a lot of those? Come on now. And, and, you, and you want to know something? Oh, man, come on, Lord. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Maybe I'm just talking about our church. We go out and tell people what the church does. Guess what our church did? We fed the homeless. We did this. We closed the... We did this. We did... How many of us run out of the church and say, Guess what, man? I was a dirty lost sinner. Jesus came down in His blood. How, why don't we go tell people that? Hmm. Boy, never mind. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't know. No good works. No blood of sacrificial animals. We don't do that no more. We'll get you there. Only by the blood of Jesus. The Word tells us that only through the blood can we have our sins washed away. And again, I'm telling you, it's through the blood, not because He loves us. It's through the blood. Revelations, chapter 7, verse 14 said, And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robe and made them white. How? In the blood of the Lamb. How many here goes through tribulation? How many here goes through bad circumstances? How many here goes through things you don't think you deserve? Guess what? You can get through it with the blood of the Lamb. Here's how we think we can get through it. Pastor, I'm having a bad day today. I just I think the devil's got me down. Would you pray for me? 
And as pastors, we're going to pray. But can I just tell you something? Because I'm, I'm like an evangelist. I'm going to blow in, blow out. <laughs> can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? If you're washed with the blood of the Lamb, you got just as much power as that pastor has. Pray for your own self. Amen. Watch God move in your life. Amen. And give Him glory for it. Amen. In our world and in our society today, nobody wants to hear about the blood of Jesus anymore. Amen. When most people look at the sacrifice of Jesus up on the cross, if they even notice it at all, it doesn't even have that impact anymore. Let me tell you how I know that. How many here have seen Pastor of the Christ? How many seen it when it first came out? First time. How many remember the first time you saw it? Let me tell you something. The more we see that, the less impact it has. We know what's coming. We see that, and that's the way the world is. There's violence in our world, whether it's depicted on the, on the movie screens or in our television, and all of that has desensitized people from the suffering that Jesus did on that cross. They see pain. They listen to the story of His death and His burial and think, so what? I've watched thousands of deaths now on the news, on the television, in the movies. Death really doesn't mean a thing to us anymore. But let me tell you what they never do see. The resurrection. Uh huh. They never see that resurrection because see, Jesus is the only one that's come back. Woo, and He's coming back. He's coming back. And what they miss is the meaning behind all of that. See, it's not enough just to see Jesus suffering on the cross. It's not enough to see Him buried or even resurrected from the dead. If we cannot get them to understand it was all done for the sake of one lost sinner. Them. He did it for you. You know, we've all heard it. You know, if you were the only one, Jesus would have died. You know how much impact that had on us? Oh, that's a good feeling. But see, until you realize if you were the only one, He would have died. Because He wanted you to have communion with His Father again. And He knew the only way that you can do that is through my blood. Shed blood of... of man, can you imagine where He came from? He's already in heaven, folks. He didn't have to come back here. Think about it. Look how important you are to God. Just because of you. Jesus said, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. It has to be made a personal thing. A personal thing. The Holy Spirit must help them to understand that Jesus took their place so that they would not suffer pain and death. How many is ready to go to heaven? No more crying, no more dying. Mama, when we get there, Dad ain't going to be limping. Hallelujah! And I'm going to tell you, for some of us, some of the younger brothers, probably especially Eddie, never seen Dad walk like a man. <clears throat> but soon and very soon, through the blood of Jesus, I'm going to see the King. That's right. And you want to know something? I got a funny feeling that as soon as I reach heaven, Judy, from around the back of the throne, because that's probably where the sea of forgetfulness is, and knowing my dad, he'll try to catch something. <laughs> he'll probably be back here fishing, Larry. But when he hears, hey, Junior has arrived, I can see my dad running around from the back of God's throne with his hands lifted up and said, you ain't going to believe this place, but you want to know how I made it, Junior? Through the blood Amen. of the Lamb. Amen. Through the blood of the Lamb. Through the foolishness of preaching. Come on now, I know you all going to like this one. <laughs> Through the foolishness of preaching the cross, Amen. the truth, the Word, the shed blood of Jesus and His death, burial and resurrection, all for the sake of redeeming lost souls to God. You'll see people come to this church and ask God to come into their life. We've got to have preachers that are going to stand up and say, we're going to preach the Word. We're going to preach it straight and we're going to preach it just the way it says it. And if you don't like that, you better get to like it because you will live for eternity somewhere. Amen. We might as well take that humble stuff off of us and say, Jesus, wash me. Wash me in the blood. But it has not, it has to be revealed to us and to each other in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. You will stand alone. 
And guess what, Jesus, what God's going to look at? You ready? Are they covered in the blood? There ain't going to be no arguments. There's not going to be no conversations there. All Jesus is going to do when you step in front of me, He's going to look and just say, I don't see no blood. Depart from me. For I never knew you. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever thought about that. That's hard right there. I never knew you. But if you've got the blood on you, because see, God don't want to see you. Don't flatter yourself. He wants to see the blood of His Son that was shed on Calvary. That's what He wants to see in you. If we can get people to have a blood test to see the real purpose of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, then we can see them ready to be a part of that great crowd of witnesses, that great crowd of people who will stand before the throne of God and become part of a loud voice of praise as we sing around the throne. If the praise team wants to come and get ready, I've got one more scripture. Revelations, chapter 12, verse 10 and 11 says this, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night have been cast down. Hallelujah. And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. What's He saying? You want to defeat Satan? You can only do it through the blood of the Lamb. And then, you got to go tell somebody about it. When's the last time you shared Jesus with anybody? I'm not trying to be hard on you. I'm really not. But you know what? If we would talk more about Jesus than what's going on in the world, maybe we could help somebody. I challenge you today. I challenge you today. Find somebody and tell them about Jesus. Oh, we want to talk about Christmas. We want to talk about where we're going for Christmas and what, what are you going to get for Christmas. Why don't you ask somebody, do you, do you know Jesus? <coughs> don't be ashamed of the blood. Jesus said, you, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before, him, uh, before God. I don't want him to be ashamed of me. I want him to be proud of me. I've always said I wanted to do whatever it takes for him to say to me what he said to Jesus. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. I want God to be pleased for me. If we want to come to church, we need to come and have a blood test. We want to make sure that our sin is, sins are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. We want to make sure that the blood still flows in our hearts and our life and makes us new. New. Anybody want to be made new? I want to be made new, man. I don't like some of the things I did yesterday. I want Jesus to wash me, make me new. It's only by the blood that we live today, and it's only by the precious blood of Jesus that we will live for eternity. Amen. So here's the thing. Have you had a blood test today? Is the bright red blood of Jesus flowing through your veins? Or have you kind of let it fade a little bit? Only you know. Only you know. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Only you know. To the world, the sight of the cross is a horrible thing. But to those of us that have been washed in the blood, it means power. It's a wonderful thing. A friend of mine wrote a song, and I'm going to end with this. But this is all it says. It says, sometimes we forget what Jesus did for us. And we just need to be reminded. And, and, and he entitled this, Remind Me of the Blood. Just, just listen to this. nine tails across his back surely ripped and tore his flesh with each and every lash he could have called ten thousand angels to take his place but he said no father I will go as they struck him spit upon his face he knew without his suffering 
there would be no grave. As a lamb led to slaughter, he'd go. But he never said a word, not one tiny word. He paid it all. All the work is finally done. He paid it all. Eternal life for all is won. He paid it all. Through the crimson flood, Lord, I pray. Remind me of the blood. Pushed a crown of thorns deep into his brow. Laid a beam across torn flesh as they led him away. The Roman soldiers drove those nails into his hands and feet. How he suffered for you and me. And upon dark Calvary's hill, he spoke these words. He alive, he alive, and at the best of <laughs> My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, he died alone for this cruel world. Jesus knew that his time had surely come, yet he prayed, not my will, Father, but thy be done. And then he bowed his head and gave up the gold, so that free from sin, you and I. share this with you. You need the blood. The blood is the most powerful thing that we have. And folks, the Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. God said that that's going to happen, and if you don't know it, we're living those perilous times. He didn't say that we can pray them away or talk them away or anything else. He said they're going to happen, but if you have the blood, you'll be able to make it through that. So I just wonder this morning, with heads bowed and eyes closed, is there anybody that will stand with me and say, Ron, I need a fresh washing this morning. I've kind of forgotten what the power of the blood can really do in my life, and I just want Jesus to give me a fresh washing of the blood. If that's you, will you just stand with me this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we need to be washed in the blood. I want to make sure, God, that when you call, I'm ready to go. And I want to make sure that you see me through the blood. Is there anybody else that will say, Pastor, I want to make sure that I'm 
prince and red with the blood. Hallelujah. But this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I want, I, want, I want you to just, I want you to look around. I want, you to, I want you to see those that are standing. And if you will, while I pray, will you just go and put your hand on them? And we're going to pray for this. That, because basically what that saying is, the rest of us, we're ready. We've got the blood in us. So we need to pray for those that says, I, I need a fresh touch of the blood of lamb. So will you will you get out of your seat and, and meet somebody and then will the rest of you just stand and stretch your hands towards some of these that are standing? Because we're going to pray because listen, there ain't nothing more you can have for Christmas than a fresh washing of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Will you begin to pray with me as they sing and whatever they are led to do? Father God, we praise you this morning. Lord, we need your blood this morning. God, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. Lord, we thank you for being that sacrificial lamb. That God, when, when, when Jesus, when you were looking for someone, all of a sudden Jesus says, here I am, use me. I'll go. Lord, right now we ask that you would just strengthen me. That Lord, you would let that blood flow again. Let them feel it from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. God, the blood of Jesus as it flows down. Lord, I thank you for the sacrifice you gave. Lord, I thank you that I can have a blood test anytime and anywhere I want it. Lord, I thank you that you split that veil. The Lord, I don't have to go tell my sin to some man, but I can walk straight into the presence of God and ask you to wash me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Lord, strengthen those that raised their hands. Strengthen those that stood up and said, I need a washing. Lord, wash them today. Wash them today and let them feel the power. Lord, take them into your presence. And let them feel. Let them feel, God, your strength and your power once again.
sight of that. Sometimes we lose sight of what was paid for our salvation, what was paid for our freedom, what was paid for our eternity. And we need to, we need to be reminded of that. I appreciate Ronnie and Judy. I don't know if I officially introduced her, did I? Ronnie's wife, Judy. Um, we just appreciate them. We're going we're gonna to go have some dinner with them in a little bit, and we're going to head back to Indiana. And Larry's got to head back to Atlanta. His wife, Teresa, and their boy, Aaron. You guys are stuck with me and Vicky and Jerry and Michelle. So. Sorry. Uh, give me three minutes here. Tyler, I didn't ask you to do this. Somewhere on the desktop, there is a song called The Christmas Song. And, and I know it's in iTunes, but I know we were having a trouble with a little bit of trouble with that earlier. Uh, just I want, to, I want to play you 30 seconds. Just 30 seconds of my little brother Eddie singing. Um, see, he, he couldn't be here, and I really wasn't going to do this, but I didn't want Ronnie to get all the credit for being a singer for the family. So since he it's sang, never, it never ends. Since he <laughs> sang, since he sang, I, I want to I want to just give you about 30 seconds of Eddie singing. You, you got it? You're the magician back there. I know you can do it. There you go. Listen to this. Crank it. <laughs> Chestnuts roasting on an open fire Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir Folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows just kind of bring it turkey and some mistletoe. Uh, Vicky's going to give us some announcements and we'll be dismissed. I appreciate you being here. Appreciate Ronnie bringing the message this morning. Come back tonight at 6. We're going to have a message about the holidays. We hope that you have been ministered to by today's sermon. Our prayer and hope is that you find comfort and encouragement in these words, as well as instruction and correction.